All right, I'll post an announcement to this effect. But going to offer projects because I think it's useful for people to get their chance to, you know, do some research on their own rather than just, you know, get me telling you to write this loop and that loop and the other. They're not mandatory, but I want you to do them. I want you to do them so badly that I'm going to say that if you do a project, you know, get a good grade on it, you can blow off the final exam. So some of y'all might like that. So we have, you know, like five weeks left in the semester. I know one of them is Thanksgiving. So you're probably not going to want to work on projects. And on the other hand, you might, you know, so that's effectively four weeks. So these are not huge, enormous, gigantic things that you cannot complete in four weeks, in my opinion. So, but you're going to want to pick the one that's, uh, you know, what you think is your level, right? You're not going to want to pick, you know, writing, you know, a word processor or something like that. You know, you're going to want to pick something that you can accomplish. You're going to want to pick something that kind of interests you. So, project ideas. Now, usually I tell you, you can't copy code from the internet. This is the only time you're going to be able to copy code from the internet. Link list. Research how to make a link list in Python. Doing it yourself, not using a built-in class that comes in Python. What do I mean by doing it yourself? This is the one project where it's okay to use code from the internet. If you're going to do this one, I'll send you the website that I want you to use that has the sample code. So your project should use that link list to add, remove, and display items in the list as specified in the requirements. The project does require creating a class. So if you've never created classes in Python before, it's harder because of that. But it's easier because you can use code from the internet. So since you might be using code from the internet, you put probably will, and this should just feel awesome. Also write a short two or three paragraph explanation in your own words what a linked list is. Without that, you don't get full credit for the project. So before long, we need to talk about what a class is, right? We may veer off and do classes, you know, before we get much further, probably as soon as we finish this chapter. So going on, next idea, baseball. The game will use random numbers to decide whether the batter strikes out or get a home run. You have a lot of freedom in this. I'm imagining something like this. Welcome to the baseball simulator. How many innings do you want to play? One. So team one, batter one. Strike, 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 you're out. That was one of three strikeouts. Team one, batter two. Strike, strike, strike. Home run. So the score is one to zero. Team one, batter three. Strike, 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 you're out. That was two of three strikeouts. Team one, batter four. Home run. The score is two to zero. And so on, right? And then when you get three strikes or, you know, however many strikes you're allowed bef bef you know, before you have to turn control over to the uh, opponent team, you know, and then they run through the same thing. They get all their chances. And then, you know, it proceeds in the next inning. Keeps going. So there's going to be a lot of loops in this one. So three strikeouts in the inning for that team. You can make it more complex than shown above. Like if you want to, you know, not only support strikes, you know, but singles and doubles and, you know, people being on specific, you know, Somebody scored a single, so they're on base one, and the next person scored, you know, a single, and so the first person went to the, right, right. You get to choose how complex you want it, right. You'll get a great grade even if it's this simple. And I'm not going to say, like, that this is so simple, right. I don't mean that negatively. But, you know, you can make it more complex, so you can keep it at this level of difficulty, or you can make it more complex. You get to decide how complex you want it. I'm not going to specify that. Football. I did start three quarter again. Write a football simulator. Use random numbers to determine how many yards a player gets each time. Failure to get 10 yards in four, in four downs causes the other team to get the ball. You could assume the game ends at 60 plays. This isn't too far from the truth, actually, because in a pro football game where the ball is in play, honestly, for an average of 12 minutes for a 90-minute game, it sounds very few, right? But there's a lot of time when, you know, they're setting up for the next thing and stuff like that. And each play usually involves about 11 seconds of action. So if you want to limit it to 60 plays, great. If you want to try to, you know, say that each play lasts a certain amount of time and you want to increment a clock, right? So you could do, you know, maybe random amounts of time for each play, whatever. You have complete freedom to make the game simple or complex. Will it support passes? 
Will it support field goals as well as touchdowns with extra point kicks? Do passes earn more yards but fail more often? You get to decide all that, right? You also get to decide, you know, how many yards they have to run in order to get the touchdown. You get to pick all that, right? Make it as realistic as you want. Or by, by realistic, I mean, you know, um, implement all the rules of football or some of the rules of football. Just make it look cool, right? And implement enough so that it is cool. Hangman. Implement a game of hangman. The computer picks a word. The player guesses, guesses, guesses the letters until they either fill the word in or run out of guesses. Let's say 10 guesses causes a failure. Or if you think fewer is fair, go with that. Like I think when we did it as kids, you know, you probably like gave them six, you know, guesses and drew a head and a body and arms, you know, and, and bummer after that was done. Whatever. Ten seems fair to me. Warning. Quite often in the past when I offer Hangman as a project, people wait until the last minute to try to write it. And then they download code from the internet. This is academic dishonesty. In other words, cheating. This isn't a project where you're allowed to download Hangman from the internet. Trust me, I can tell because I know what your code looks like. I've been looking at it all semester. And so I can usually find the exact site the code came from. So don't do this. Don't wait until the last minute. And if you get stuck, I'm happy to provide you a flow chart or look at your code to give you some help. Right? This is not that difficult of a project. If you have the flow chart, it's pretty easy. Right? But try it yourself first. I repeat, don't download the code from the internet or bad things happen. It's counted as academic dishonesty. You get a zero on it, and then the dean gets a report, and then the you know Office of Academic Affairs or you know whatever. So, Pie Fighter, are you a D and D or Pathfinder fan? I give you simple rules for a game where two fighters. You got two fighters, one with that they both have an attack strength and an armor rating, and, and they fight it out until one player is reduced to zero hit points. You can make the idea better if you want. One player did a Pokemon bat match where you pick which, you know, whether you want Pikachu and the computer then picks whether it wants Charizard, and some attacks, you know, do more damage against that specific Pokemon than others. So that was a cool project. Caesar Cipher. Simple and advanced. The book gives you code for Caesar Cipher, so I'm not just going to let you turn that in, right? Copy it from, uh, you know, the mind tap or, you know, from your book or whatever. So, the project requirements specify two algorithms, a simple one and a more complex one. So, I'll upload the project requirements so you can see them. You let the user pick which algorithm, simple Caesar or more complex Caesar, and whether to encipher or decipher. So they're going to pick, write, and then you're going to allow them to choose a shifting value, right? And then it'll in encrypt or decrypt. Those are the wrong words to use when you're talking about a cipher. So you have, the, you have to implement the two ciphers and the requirements. You want to go nuts and include the one from the book or whatever, or make three options or whatever, and that's fine. It's another one where in the past people would download code from the internet or just turn on what the book provides. It's not acceptable. That's why the project specifies the guidelines for the algorithms. Or your own. Are these all boring? If you have an idea for your own project, mail it to me. And send me a text saying you did so, so I can bounce on the email as soon as possible. Give you some feedback on it. Like, that looks cool. Or, hey, you sure you want to try that? If it turns out to be too hard, despite your initial prediction, you can always change your mind towards the end of the semester and then do Hangman from the flowchart. But I'd rather you submit a good, honest effort, even if it's not fully functioning, right? Like if you're doing Pie Fighter, if it doesn't implement all the rules perfectly, but it runs and it shows, you know, one character beating another or vice versa, you know, even if it doesn't implement the rules perfectly, it's going to be a pretty good project, right? Or, you know, you're implementing Hangman, I'd kind of like for you to uh, finish Hangman if you could implement it, you know. Um, no. So anyways. Give it a good, good honest try. What do they call it? The old college try or whatever. But if you get totally stuck and you only have two weeks left in the semester, ask for the flow chart for Hangman and then, and then crank that out if you're going to bother, right? Because the project can replace your final exam. But on the other hand, that means the exam can replace the project. So you get to pick which one you want to do. What I would do is I'd attempt a good a project, try to do good on it, and then get told, you know, yo, you can skip the exam. 
made a, made a perfect score on your exam or whatever. So, that makes sense, gang? All right. It doesn't have to be like a game or nothing. It could be... If you want to come up with your own idea, it seems like I listed almost all games except for a linked list. But if you got something else, like one person did... Uh, like they, they wanted to hook it up to a card reader, an ID card reader. They didn't get to do that, so they made it to where the person just typed in a, an ID, you know. And mm -hmm. But anyways, like, you know, for keeping track of when people were coming in and, and, and leaving, you know, the facility based on what they typed in and stuff like that. And that, and that was a cool project, too. Oh, okay. So you can come up with your own if these all seem trite and boring or whatever. Well, recently I was, I was trying to explain to my wife. She saw me doing homework and... And uh, she's a nurse. Yeah. And so she told me about like dosage calculations and how they have to do it manually. So I did a little script to kind of show her how. Oh, that'd be awesome. You know, yeah. It, it kind of it converted from milliliters to grams. And yeah, that'd children. be cool. That'd be cool. So like, do doses depend upon the weight of the patient or something right. like it, that? You, you enter in the information and then it, I had it show her what it would be and then I had her do it manually. And, yeah, so that'd be slick. I was to what the usefulness was of, you know, programming and, and yeah, and the class that I was Yeah, why you're bothering to learn programming, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, that, that'd be a cool project. I'd recommend you do that one if you're interested okay. in it. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right. I believe we've covered lists and dictionaries quite enough. Oh, one more project that I need to list is the idea of the one that opens the file and then draws a graph based on how many letters, you know. A appeared 20 times, B appeared 7 times, that bar would be bigger or smaller than the other one. So we need to play with turtle graphics to learn how to draw graphs, although there are graphic libraries and if you felt like, you know, doing something like that instead. So I did a lot of turtle graphics in my fundamentals class. I know the other classes don't do many, if any, turtle graphics, like if you took it from Donna Wilson or somebody else. And if you didn't take fundamentals, then I don't think we've done a lot of them in here. So the way that turtle graphics work is you create an object on the screen. It starts off in the middle. And then you tell it, yo, go forward. And so it starts going forward, you know, 100 pixels. And then you tell it, turn right 90 degrees. And so now it's pointing this way. And you tell it to go forward, and, you know, 100 again. You tell it to go right 90 degrees. You tell it to go forward again, right. And that would draw a square. So our bar graph is going to kind of be squares, except you're going to wind up going if we think it through. Usually I draw on the board, but the people at home aren't going to be able to see as I draw on the board. Uh, yeah, let's just look, right? Um, if we right, what do you got to do? Say you were cruising along that way. For some reason, um, they've decided that zero degrees in turtle graphics, you know, is not going north but to the east, but whatever. Okay, so you're cruising along, and then you got to make a left turn, and a right turn, and a right turn and a left turn and now you're ready to go back. Maybe you're going to back up a little bit so it might be a left turn, right, 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 turn around 180 degrees and go back left. Right. So let's see if I can keep track of that in a little notepad file or something like that so I can make sure. Alright. So, left, right, 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 180 degree switch and you're good to go. So left, right, 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 and then 180 degrees. Wouldn't matter whether you're turning left or right. Okay, right. So you're going up when you turn left. You're drawing the top 
after you turn right, you're going down. After you turn right again, you're drawing the bottom. When you turn right again, and this is going to reset you going back to the left again, right? So to do turtle graphics, we got to import the turtle library. We on lecture S? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. My goal is to get us all the way through Z before the end of the semester. S T U V W X Y Z. Yeah, we ought to be able to. Okay, so you got to import the turtle library to get this to work. Then you have to make a new turtle. I'm going to call mine Leo or Leonardo, right? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Equals turtle dot capital T turtle parentheses in parentheses. Now let me pull up my cheat sheet because I don't want to waste our time making mistakes in this. There was a website that we used in my fundamentals class called Hello Little Turtles that had examples of turtle graphics. And if you're interested in it, then I could link it to you. Okay, so turtle.turtle with a capital T. That creates a turtle. Let's get it to do something. Let's make it draw a circle. You mean lecture S, right? <laughs> yeah, we're done with the semester Z. Um, let's make that lecture S. All right, so there we go. That's enough to get them running. I'm going to delete that circle. I don't want him to draw a circle, really. But uh, that's just to, you know, prove that it works. And there he goes. Notice that when he draws a circle, he veers off to the left. I don't know if there's a way to change that behavior. Now let's draw that square, that rectangle we were talking about. I don't want to do a circle. I'm going to comment that out. I'm going to go and grab my little notes about it. All right, I need to know how far he's going up, right? Because that's the, uh, right, that's the value, right? Like um, if we want to draw, you know, 50 tomatoes against 100 something else, then we're going to go up 50 the first time and 100 the next time. And let's just do this. Height equals 50. Width equals 20. And the spacing equals, um, you know, 10 between them. And we can mess with all this and make it look like we want. Now, height is probably really going to come from a list, right? And we're probably really going to have, you know, a for loop to do all this. But for now, let's just make it draw one, and then we might turn it into a module function. All right. So let's go forward half of the spacing, right? Or maybe none of the spacing. If we want to start it right at the, you know, at the end, let's uh, let's ignore the spacing for now. So we're going to make him go forward. Nope, nope. Because if he was going forward, we'd be adding spacing. Forwards for spacing. Then we're going to make him turn left 90 degrees. Leo dot left. Doesn't have to be 90 degrees, but for a bar graph and making a rectangle, it'd be nice. Now he's going to go up the specified height. And so you use dot forward, or dot FD is an abbreviation for forward. Leo dot FD, and I like abbreviations, they're easier for you all to type. Height. Now he needs to turn right and draw the width, right? Because that's the top of it. Let 
just going to add some comments. This is going up. Now we're going to turn right 90 degrees and we're going to draw the top Leo dot forward going the width of the rectangle. All right, that is the top. We're going to turn right again and go down. Leo dot right another 90 degrees and go forward the height again. Leo dot FD height. So he's going down. Now we need to close off the bottom of it in my opinion. So we're going to turn right one more time. Leo dot right 90 degrees we're going to go forward again. How, how uh, far should we go forward to draw the uh, bottom? Double the width? Yeah, we could do double the width if we were going to add spacing. I'm just going to go the width and then turn them around and go back. And then we can worry about the spacing later. So Leo dot forward the width. Then he needs to spin around. Turn around 180 degrees. It doesn't matter whether it's right or left. Right? Leo dot right 180 degrees. So to go reverse, right? And then Leo dot forward the width again. I don't even know what to call that, right? Ready to draw next rectangle. So if we were going to draw the next one, we might want to use the spacing and all that. I'm kind of voting for completely ignoring spacing at this point. You could uh, derive the width based on the number of items you wanted to do, right? When he starts drawing, his graph is going to be appear in the middle. You might want to figure out how to reposition him so that he's starting off on the left side. I'm not going to answer all those or else it wouldn't be a project. But if you need help, always happy to help. Some of y'all text me a lot. Makes me very happy to communicate with y'all because I get so lonely and I know you're interested in it. So. Let's run it and see what happens. All right, he drew it. If you don't like seeing that little triangle, you can hide the cursor. Or you can change his shape so he actually looks like a turtle. I don't mind it, but maybe when we're done with the graph, we might want to hide the rectangle, the, the cursor. Why don't we find out how to hide the turtle? Python 3 turtle hide. Well, that's giving a big hint right there, huh? Turtle dot hide turtle. Okay, so before we start drawing anything, or at the end, I don't care. Either way, Leo dot hide turtle, like that. Now we're done. That way we see the cursor as it's drawing, which might be fun. But for our finished perfect product, you might not want to see it, that triangle left over. Yeah, like that. <coughs> now we're ready to draw another one. It's almost about time to put it in a loop. Why do I say that? Anytime you want to repeat code. It's a good idea to put it in a loop. It's also a good idea to put it in a function. So why don't we make a list of heights? Right? This is the data we want to graph. Graph is equal to, we want the first bar to be 50 tall, we want the next bar to be 100 tall, and we want the third bar to be 30 tall. Now we're going to make a for statement, a for x in range or something like that. And we're going to tab all this stuff over except for the hide turtle.
except I'm not going to call it x in range. We're actually going to be getting these values, so we want a for each loop. We want a value based loop. So for height in graph, colon, and tab all this stuff over until you get to the height turtle. That should draw three bars, unless I've made some kind of mistake. that, right? Labels are cool too, right? You might want to put a label underneath it, or a label at the top, or both, right? If you put the label at the top, you might put the height of it, right? So that we don't have to guess that it's 100 tall. If you put the label at the bottom, you might show what you're representing, like this is eggs, you know, or you know how many occurrences of the letter A or something like that. Let's do that. Why don't we learn how to put labels on there and honestly have to cheat? Does anybody need more typing time? All right, let's. Uh... All righty, let's add some text. But you get the idea, right? We could even turn this into a function. What kind of function do we want to put? Do we want to uh, pass in all of these values? including the width and the spacing, I think that'd be a good idea. So here's what our function's going to look like. Grab all of that stuff. No, 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 no. Let's just grab all of this and cut it and put a comment here that we're going to be calling draw bar, right? Or you copy it if you're paranoid about losing what you just, you know. And let's go put our function up at the top of the code or something like that. You don't have to if you use that if underscore underscore main business. Doesn't have to be at the top of the code. But since we don't have that. Okay. So I'm going to paste that code. Ooh, I should have been paranoid about it because it's not in my memory. Oh, don't make me. Okay. Surely you're there. Control Z until you get it back. Yeah, apparently that's what I'm going to be doing. All righty. But, but even if I cut it, it should have been in the buffer. Yeah. All right. Fine. Okay. So, def draw underscore bar, parentheses in parentheses. We're going to have to decide what variables we want to fill in. That'll be pretty easy, though. We're going to need to pass in the height and the width and if we decide to, the spacing. So why don't we go ahead and do that even though we're not using spacing right now. So we're going to pass in the height, the width, and the spacing. And I'm going to add a comment. We're not doing spacing right now. I'm going to delete everything up to the comment. So we have the def, we have everything tabbed one level underneath it, and then underneath that we create our turtle. By the way, if you like watching the turtle and you want to make him draw slow, set his speed to zero, like this, excuse me, one, leo.speed one, that makes him draw as slow as possible. If you want him to go faster, you make it 10. If you want him to go fastest at all, you make it zero. Now it's kind of silly that zero is the fastest of all. Sorry, I didn't make it up. That would draw it as fast as, as possible. Maybe I'll leave it at that. Set warp speed. If you're drawing something with a lot of circles, it's a good idea to crank the speed up because the circles take longer to draw than straight lines. A lot longer. All right, down here, inside our for loop, where'd my for loop go? Right here. 
The only thing in here is going to be... I need to see the definition of my of my method. I guess I could copy and paste it, but okay. Draw underscore bar, height, comma, width, comma, spacing. Now, if I played my cards right, it should run the same way as it did before. Or there's syntax errors, right? That's always possible. There we go. It's always good to, and there's a word that I'm looking for and I can't come up with it, functionalize your code, to break it up into functions if it makes sense. Don't go nuts making functions if after you make it, your code is, you know, completely messed up and you can't fix it right there's no point in doing it like for hours and hours but if you're doing something with repeats like this why not right that way the code down here looks really nice do we want to go forward our spacing just just for grins well the only problem is with that is well, yeah, let's, let's add little lines for spacing we can remove this not handling space spacing right now if we tack this on. We're going to go forward half of the space, right? Because the spacing is a width between the bars. So we're going to go half of the spacing. Leo.forward spacing divided by 2. And I'm not sure if we have to convert that to an int or not. If it gives us an error, we'll figure it out. And then after we're done drawing everything, let's go forward to the spacing again. Leo.fd parentheses spacing divided by two. Now we should have little bars between, right? Little, excuse me, little gaps between our shapes. If you don't like it, pass in a spacing of zero. You have control over it. If you don't like that beginning and that ending bar, well, you get, you, it's up to you to figure out how to do that because I don't know. If you want to start on this side, then you can research, you know, all you'd have to do is turn 180 degrees and run that way or there's a set XY command that can let you set your X and your Y position you just have to need to know how wide the window was you can set how wide the window is with turtle commands you can do a lot of research in this I really don't want if you do a project involving a bar graph that's going to be you know the last project that I add to the project descriptions don't make it start in the middle that's kind of lame even through experimentation, you could figure out, you know, how far to make it go over here. And then you might calculate the width of the bars based on the number of items, something like that, right? Just to make it look kind of cool. But get it working first, right? It's more important to get it to work than it is to make it pretty. It's when you get it working, that's when you make it pretty. If I delete this circle command, I can probably get all of my code, or most of it, on the screen. Alright, before we leave this topic, although we're not totally done yet because we haven't seen how to add text at the top and the bottom, but maybe I'll just link you to the page where it shows that. Because yes, I stole this idea, you know, from that Hello Little Turtles code. Let's make our graph. See if we can do this. Graph equals, and the book loves to show this, and I've never used it. List, parentheses, range from 10 to 201, skipping by tens. I wonder if that'll work. If it's a syntax error, I'm, I'm going to bail out. Yeah. Needle king. All right, I'm going to undo that, but, but it made me feel good. All right. All right, so if you want to learn, if you want to know more about the bar graphs, 
I think they show some code down here at the bottom. See, if you look at this page, you can get it to do all sorts of stuff. They really are kind of fun, which is why I use them a lot in my fundamentals class. Well, that's not showing how to do it. Let's go to the next page. This is actually such a good resource that there have been semesters where I didn't use, make students buy a textbook at all and we just use this. There we go. All right. See? Subtle plagiarism on my part. Draw bar, T height, whatever. Okay. So I'm going to add a comment down here. Read. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Like, like you're going to want to type that in with me. Right? Jesus. If you want to learn how to add text labels to the top and bottom of the graph. And I'm going to also post this in the announcements. All right, just make it easy for you all to find. Maybe I'll teach the next class skipping mind tap and just use this again. All right, so I'm going to post a personal note here. which is what's up with Prof's life. I have a close relative, family member, who became paralyzed, got brain damage, and just this week has progressed to being assigned to hospice, if you know what that means, it's not good, right? These things have taken an unfortunate amount of my time. And I appreciate the patience that y'all have given me. Make sense, gang? Yes, sir. All right. All right. So, we still have more time. We're actually ready for the next chapter. I mean, you can do all sorts of cool things with turtles. I guess as we go along, maybe it's something else cool. Uh, like for with for loops and stuff, would have been a good time to do it then. Oh, where are the rest of the chapters? All right, apparently we're skipping, skipping from chapter 5 to 9. Oh, wait, here they are. Well, some of them. There's six. Seven and eight. All right, no such luck. But maybe it'd be cool to talk about classes. Leap ahead, because we're awesome that way. We can handle advanced concepts. This is what's known as object-oriented programming. 
Now it doesn't have anything to do with turtles, so I'm just going to go to the top and push that turtle stuff way down. What are we going to show now? Classes, which is known as object-oriented programming. What's the idea of object-oriented programming? Everything we've done up until now, you know, if you had to store somebody's weight, you just created a variable for it. And if you had to store their height, you created another variable for it, right? And, but if you think about it, you can cluster data together, right? Just like Dev was talking about, if you have a patient, you might want to know their, you know, their, their weight and what medicine that they're being given and the, you know, the levels of medicine or whatever. And so, you know, that's a cluster of information. Well, you can create objects that are a cluster of information. You can bet that the turtle is a class and that Leo is an object because he has to have a lot of information, doesn't he? He has to have an X coordinate on the screen, a Y coordinate on the screen. He has to have a direction that he's going. He has to have something that says whether the cursor is hidden or not. He has to have a line width because you can change his line width. He has to have a speed element. He has to have a line color, right? All sorts of things. Oh, one more thing I wanted to do about this. Why don't we fill in our graph with a color, right? We skip that. I want to fill in my... And I never remember if it's begin fill, start fill, if there's an underscore or not. So I'm going to... Google Python 3 turtle fill. All right. Oh, what do you know? Here's a class. Okay, it's begin underscore fill, which probably means it's end underscore fill. All right, so we just have to pick the right place to start filling. And in my mind, it's before we start going up, and it's after we've gone and draw on the bottom. So we want to stop our fill here. You may think it's weird that I'm putting my stop here, but it's, it's you know, Leo dot end, or was it stop? I've already forgotten. Fill. And then up here, before we start going up, we're going to do Leo begin fill. Right, so we just added this line. Don't add that comment, right? Let's just show you what we changed. And then Leo dot begin fill. Yeah, that looks way better. What if you want different colors? We can do that. So we just added these two things, right? And again, don't add all those hashes. That's just there to show you what we changed. Let's change the turtle's color. Down here after we set his speed. Leo.color. I want red lines with a yellow fill. And so the third thing that I just changed, that line. pretty. Maybe the solid bars were better, in which case I just make it red comma red, right? You know, or black comma black or whatever colors I wanted. You could fill each one with a different color. You could pass a color val, you know, make color parameters here that the code down here specifies. I'm going to leave it like that, right? I don't need to make it too complicated. You want, you feel like expanding upon it, you can. So working for everybody. All right. So we're going to come up here and we're going to define a class, and I'm going to make it just a little bitty class called rectangle, something like that. So class rectangle colon no parentheses. It's not a function. Then we have to write what I call the constructor. In Python, it's called an init method. And these are double underscores. So if you don't put the space in the double underscores, ain't going to work. So def underscore underscore init 
Underscore under what what? Alrighty. I did start the recorder again, did I not? Yeah, okay. Init underscore underscore parentheses and then the word self in parentheses colon. Now you can tell that is a function. I'm gonna add some notes. A class is a blueprint for an object that is a collection of data and methods, parentheses, functions that act on that data. So what does it do when we're going to create it? Well, we're going to create a height, 10, 20, whatever, and a width. Our rectangle only contains two things, a height and a width. Then we're going to write a function called get area. And the area of a rectangle is just the height and the width. What this self means is that it's referring to the object itself. When we call these functions, we do not add the word self down here. And you'll see what I mean as soon as we create an object and call some of the methods, the functions. So def get underscore area, area parentheses in parentheses, and inside the parentheses, self colon again. And let's calculate the area. Area equals self dot height times self dot width. Some people like to use the word this there because that's how C and Java do it. The guy who invented Python documented it as using the word self, but it doesn't matter. You could use the word this all the way through. All right, so area is equal to self dot height. I should have just called it X and Y or something, right? Or H and W. You know what? I'm going to do that. Right? Self.h and self.w. See, I'm deleting these things just to make them easier to type. Times self.w and then return the area, just like all of our other functions we've written. All righty. Down here, we're going to create a rectangle. I'm just going to call it R1. R1 equals rectangle with a capital R because I called it capital R up here if you didn't make that lowercase and then parentheses in parentheses just like when we made a turtle we added the parentheses what are the parentheses for because this is actually calling a function well, what function is it calling it's calling the init function even though we didn't put dot init or anything like that when you create an object it calls the init method. So if the class is the blueprint for an object, think of houses. You want to build yourself a house on a lake, you, you buy a blueprint. And then you hire you know, a construction crew to go and build the house. Right? The house is the object. You know, or you're a developer, and from that blueprint you build 100 houses around a lake. You have 100 objects. So this is the blueprint. This is the object. Create an object of type, quote, rectangle. Now let's find the area of that rectangle, right? Now what you see here is that I hard coded the height and the width to 20 and 10. So the area is always going to be 200. We're going to modify the init function or we're going to do something so that we could set different values. Let's do that. Let's say r1.h equals, it's going to be 100 tall, and r1.w and it's going to be 10 wide. 
Now let's get the area. Area equals r1 dot get underscore area parentheses in parentheses. And let's print that guy out. Heck. Let's make a print function that's part of the rectangle class. We are just that cool. DEF, I'm modifying the rectangle class again. Print, parentheses cell, and parentheses colon. We need to get the area. Area equals get underscore area. We already have a function that does it right, so we don't need to do it again. If it gives us grief, we could copy and paste that, but I think this is going to work. Now let's print it out. Print height equals percent f comma. How about just percent d? These are all integers. If we ever set them to doubles, the code's going to break. It's our fault. Right? Width equals percent d comma. Area equals percent d end quote, and then now we have to specify our tuple. So percent, parentheses, the height, self.height, the width, comma, self.width, and then the area we just calculated. And then one close parentheses and one another one. So down here, we don't even need to call get area, although there's nothing wrong with doing it. Let's print the rectangle. R1.print. Let me make sure it works. I may have put in get area not defined. It says who? Should I have called it self.getArea? Probably. Yep. Oh, and it's drawing its graph still. All right. Yo, gang, everybody's typing along. You're going to need to fix this line. Go ahead and do so. The first line of print self needs to be self.getArea. I made a mistake and left that part off. Just like we have to put self.h and self.w to refer to the pieces, we also have to put self.here to call that method. Remember, a method is just a function that's inside a class. So I am going to assign homework over this idea, but I'm going to try to make it as super easy as possible, just because we're not on a chapter over classes yet. It's going to be to change this or to make a new class called circle. Circle only needs one data element, which is the radius. And so get area is going to call a different formula, right? And then the print doesn't need to print out all this stuff. It just needs to print the radius in the area. And then down here, you're going to set the radius of it, right? Instead of H or W, if you call the radius R, it'd be, you know, whatever. So. Hopefully it won't be too difficult. If you get stuck on it, text me. And I might even show you the answer, you know, or at least I'll give you good hints if you show me your code. Right. Why would I show you the answer? Because we're still at the learning stage where we haven't even hit the book chapter on it yet. We'll get there. All right. I'll move this homework like to the top or the bottom of the document. But for now, I'll put it here. Or heck, I could put it here. All right. Homework. Why don't I do the triple quote thing? Using the rectangle class as an example, write a circle class, a rickle class. It only needs one variable, right? Only one self variable. Self.radius or self.r, whatever you want to call it. 
whatever you want to call it. Modify the print statement. Well, first you're going to have to modify get area, right? Modify get area. The formula is area equals pi r squared, right? I don't remember how to specify pi r squared. Can we just do math.pi? Do we have to include pi to get all that? Uh, you can figure that out. Just put 3.141959 if you can't times r to the power of 2. Right? So that that be like one of your steps. And then modify your print method to display the area, the radius and the area of the circle. Your code should create a circle, set the radius, and call print. Just like the rectangle. No, no. Classes are totally later chapter, so a tur uh, turtles aren't even in it. We didn't cover anything. I mean, we didn't go from the book this time. We didn't go from a PowerPoint. <laughs>